Hi and welcome back to High on Coding. I'm your host Mohamed Azam and this is a continuation of the MongoDB series and I'm going to show you the concept of ID in MongoDB. Okay. So the first thing is to start the server. I have already started the server going to the command prompt and saying MongoD and that will start the server. If you haven't watched the previous screencast I highly recommend that you do so because most of the new screencasts are dependent on the old screencast. So let's go over there and create Mongo instance. I'm going to say mongo.connect and get oops, get the database, which is mongo.getdb. Our database name in this case is notwin. Going to get the categories. Uh, collection I can say this is categories okay and now I have the collection so I can say okay var category I do know that there is a category in the categories collection whose name is beverages so I'm going to retrieve that by saying find one new document and I know that the name is beverages. Once I got that category and I get this, I can simply print out the name and at the end I can say disconnect. Let's run this. You will see that we do have a category name beverages and that's why it is printed on the screen. What if I say ID over here and run it again, you will see that there is a property uh, called ID which has a 24 bit, 24 byte, uh, with a 24 bit or byte something, uh, byte value. And this is basically a unique key generated for that particular document. Now, this is not generated by you, it is all generated by the MongoDB. Okay? And it will be on all of the documents that you have. So, even if uh, right now I have a category, and this is simply a document because uh, when you say find one, it's actually going to find a document. Okay, so this is a unique key that is generated for each document. It's generated, created by MongoDB. Um, now you can use, of course, different type of keys. I, I assume that you can use different type of keys, but this will give you a uh, you know uniqueness. In, in your application, in your documents. Uh, if you don't like this underscore ID, because if you're using objects, your, each of your object then have to expose this particular property. If you're searching by this uh, ID, then if you don't want to use this, you can of course use different properties in your object. Like uh, if you're doing a category, you can use category ID. If you're using products, you can use product ID, user, user ID, okay, these kind of things. One important thing about ID, if I print it out over here, if I go and say category ID, and if I just print out the type of ID, because most people think this is a string, but no, this is not really a string, it is an object ID or OID, which comes from the OID class, okay? So this means that if you convert this to string and if you do the search again, let's say that I'm doing the same search. Uh, okay, wait, <laughs> cannot really do that because I need that ID. So let's use another, let's say C. And what I'm going to do is do the same search. But this time I will use or I will search by ID and I will pass in ID and console.writeline C of name. So what we are doing is we are using the primary key to look for a particular document in the categories collection. But one thing to especially note about this is that that primary key, that OID, object ID, has been converted to a string. So let's run this. And of course, you will see that the object was not actually returned. So this means that if you are sending this as a string, you're not able to get the object back. 
So let's remove the to string and try it again. So now we are sending the object ID to our document database and I'm, we are telling it that, hey, please find me a document whose underscore ID is the object ID ID. So let's go and search for that and you'll see that now the beverage is, is printed on the screen. So the question now is, how do I convert? If I have this ID as a string, how do I convert to an object ID? So let's create a small function that will do that. Private, and it will return you object ID. Uh, get object ID from string. And this will return, oh, this is a static method. So return new object ID it takes two parameters. If you can pass in string. Now the problem with this is when you convert it to string, it add quotes around it. And object ID doesn't like that. So although this will, this will actually fail because it has to be uh, at a certain uh, correctors. So let's go ahead, we have a little bit of time. So let's go ahead and see that if we convert this ID and we have to do a two string. So now what we're doing is we are passing in a object ID as string to this method and we are telling it to convert it. So let's run this and you will say that the object ID string should be 24 characters. So it's not valid. So in that case, what you need to do is to replace it. And I think, just replace it with, oops, too many things going on over here. Is it this or this? I keep on forgetting. Okay, let's run this. And now, so what we are doing is we have converted the string to an object ID and we got our beverages back. So you can still use the ID it's just whenever you're converting it to a string, just remember to remove the quotes which are surrounding the ID field. And this is very important. If you don't, however, if you don't like the ID, which is automatically created, if you don't like it, it's no problem. You can always go to your object. You can always put in your document. Let's say if I have a category document, I can always say category, uh, category ID, equal to or whenever you're creating the category uh, you know good dot new good to string or whatever so you can always use that to create the ID that's pretty much for this one uh, in the in the next video in the next screencast I'm going to show you how you can create nested documents and store them in the document database one last note high on coding. We give you free articles, free podcasts, free screencast, and we don't charge anything. We just need your support. High on coding is always looking for donations. If you want to sponsor a video, just shoot me an email at azamsharp at gmail.com. If you want to donate, here's a donation page, one-time donation or monthly recurring donation. And look at the amount. It's crazy. $2.00. Five dollars, ten dollars, two dollars is good, five dollars is good, everything is good, everything is cheap, right? The amount of material that is in high encoding, look at the videos. If I go on videos, I mean, it's just crazy. Look how much I have to scroll, and all the videos are free. Everything is free, and everything is HD quality. I'm here for you, we are all here for you, and we only need your love in the form of donation. That's pretty much it. Stay tuned for next screencast in which we will learn how to save, how to insert, how to fetch nested documents. That will be fun. So stay tuned on that. Thank you.